I can't believe it has been an entire year running these grow out inverters and this stack of Gilbrand batteries off grid at my property. If you want to hear how the entire year has gone, the pros and cons, stick around. Hi, I'm David. Welcome to my channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Over a year ago, I purchased these grow watt inverters. These are the 5000 ES model from Signature Solar. I also purchased the stack of Gill brand batteries, which has since been rebranded as uh, EG4. When I originally bought these inverters, I bought three of them. I had three stacked up for a total of 15 kilowatts of inverting capacity. That was only about one month, and then I took the third one down. I found I just didn't need all that capacity. I used a Victron charge controller after that, and the third one I repurposed and gave to a friend of mine. Links to those videos in the description below if you wanna see that build. But since then, I've been running on just these two, or 10,000 watts of inverting capacity. So bottom line, if you don't want to watch the whole video, they've been working great for me. Uh, but there are a couple of things. So I'm going to start with two kind of cons, uh, downsides of running this system. And then I'm going to get into the things that I do like. Uh, and then we'll wrap up with whether or not I would do it again. Start off, I did purchase all of this equipment myself. I bought it from Signature Solar. I am part of their affiliate program. So I have affiliate links in the description below. If you use those links, it does help out the channel. So thank you if you choose to do so. Now, the first con of the system is noise. Each of these inverters has two fans built into them. Uh, those fans are variable speed. The vast majority of the time, it doesn't bother me. It's a very quiet fan noise in the back. However, if the inverters get loaded up, they, the fans will ramp up in RPM and they start to get loud. Well, right now there's about 2,600 watts coming in from solar and the fans get kind of loud. So I switch these off when I'm filming. Keep that in mind if you're thinking about putting these in a location where you don't want that noise. There's one other really, really minor thing that I have noticed. Now this doesn't actually bother me, but it might be a concern for you. And that is when you kick on a really heavy load, uh, either the motor of the dryer kicks on or my air compressor kicks on, something like that, then I will notice the LED lights will blink. Just for a split second, uh, and then the inverters will come back up. And that's because of the voltage sag that happens uh, really quick. It's less than one second, uh, but uh, it does cause the lights to blink, so be aware of that. Uh, nothing else shuts off, nothing, actually the computers don't turn off, the internet doesn't lose connection, uh, anything like that. So it hasn't affected me. It's just something that I noticed when I first installed these inverters. All right, so now moving on to all the things that I like. Uh, first off, I like that the controls are built into the inverter and it came with all the wiring to parallel the two up. Uh, I did not need to buy any additional component in order to control these. Uh, when they came straight out of the box, it worked. Uh, one of the biggest complaints that I have is when you first get a product and they tell you to hook it up to the internet and then create an account with uh, their uh, website. Uh, and then you can, you have to update the firmware. So it's like you buy a brand new product and then all of a sudden you've got to fix it. You've got to go do work to upgrade it. Now, I don't like that. So I like that I can just run these straight out of the box. Now, the biggest positive that I can say about these things is they've never once uh, glitched. They've never nuisance tripped on me. Uh, they have just continuously ran for the last year, which is amazing. Uh, even after I added this uh, triple pole circuit breaker down here with the auto transformer, uh, nothing has ever tripped. Uh, so they have just continued to run. And this means that they've ran even when I've been doing uh, laundry with the dryer, washing machine, uh, dishes running, uh, using the electric oven, uh, anything uh, in my house and property. They've just never shut down. They continue to work which is amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thrilled at that. Well, we just finished moving the dryer over to this location. Now this was an old dryer I picked up on Craigslist and I fixed it up, put a new cord on it. 
and I now have it running directly off of this system. There's solar coming in right now, but I've turned off that inverter. I wanna see if one inverter can run a full-size dryer. Now we just loaded it up, so it's plenty full of wet clothes, and we've got temperature on high. So let's go ahead and see if it will start. <laughs> oh, I heard a beep. So I saw this flash, but now it seems to be running. Oh, it's 103%. All done. I'd like to note that my entire property, house and garage, is 100% electric. I don't have a wood stove or wood boiler. I don't have a propane system. I'm just all electric here. And these two guys will run the entire property. So in the last year, have I needed help with this system? Well, I've never once had to call tech support. Now, if I needed tech support, I'd call Signature Solar because that's where I bought these. But I never have needed to call in to tech support to help walk me through the settings. I found that this little manual that came with the inverters is all that I needed. Inside here was a wiring diagram that showed how to parallel the two so that they communicate. It also listed out the uh, different menu options. These inverters have uh, 50 items in the menu and you need to program them for your situation. So I found that the menu was clearly laid out. I didn't have any trouble setting these up in the first place. As a reminder, I run these off grid. I have no grid input into the AC input side. So I've never tested the transfer switch of these two inverters. However, I did do that one time with the third one that I took off the wall because I gave it to a buddy and he was gonna do generator charging. Uh, that's in my video and it worked fine. But I personally do not connect the grid to these inverters. I don't uh, pass the grid through them to power my loads. So I have found that the uh, power coming out of these is clean enough for my purposes. All right. I'm holding the probes on the 240 volt. And down here, we have a nice clean sine wave. My favorite part of these inverters is the high voltage charge controller that's built in. That means that you can minimize all of your connections out at the solar array. You don't need the combiner box out at the solar array like you would with other lower voltage charge controllers. And that means that uh, these are going to be running in uh, smaller gauge wire, uh, typically running more efficient with less voltage drop, but not always. Depends, of course, on how well you size your wires. The inverters are not complete without a good battery bank. Now, this whole battery pack is just over 30 kilowatt hours. It's been running flawlessly. I've never had a single circuit breaker trip. I've never had the BMS shut down. Uh, no overheating issues, nothing like that. Now, I just plugged it into the laptop for the first time since uh, the video a year ago when I did it. Uh, so let's see how we're doing. Now up here, we can see that there is eight millivolts difference in the cells from one to the next. Uh, we are at 91% state of charge and 100% state of health. S-O-H, state of health. That is excellent. Uh, these batteries are supposed to be good for, I think it's 7,000 cycles to 80% state of health. And right now we're still at 100% state of health. An entire year running this system, and I've been running it hard. I've been running uh, the first four months that I had this, I charged it all the way up to 58.4 uh, volts and ran it down all the way to... Uh, 46 volts, if I remember correctly. Uh, since then, I had uh, tightened up those parameters just a little bit. I made it a little bit more conservative. So for the past, what is it, eight months, I've now been running it up to uh, 56 volts and down to 48 volts, which is still uh, running it pretty hard. Some manufacturers even go more conservative than that. But after an entire year of running these batteries at those parameters, 
I was expecting to see 99 or 98% state of health, but they're still at 100%, so I think they're gonna be lasting a really long time for me in this setup. I'm thrilled with them. I think the batteries were a great buy. So probably the last and biggest question that all of you wanna know, uh, do I regret buying these? The answer is no, I don't regret buying them. Well, thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Wow, that's a good one. Oh, that's okay. I got it. Do you want Daddy to start it for you? You can hold it up. Can you hold it up, Daddy? Can you hold it up?